They're one of Britain's biggest music exports, the band who made banjos mainstream again. But Mumford & Sons hit the news this week for something far away from their feel-good music, announcing they'll boycott a festival in Sweden after reports of several sexual assaults when they headlined there last month. We woke up, you know, one morning and read it in the news, literally, and were completely shocked by it. We felt it was unacceptable, so we don't want to go and play there again until there's been a serious conversation about security and policing. It's been reported that that was to do with who was there. You know, that the, there was a cologne effect. It may have been immigrants or refugees. We, we don't know anything about that, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't even dream of trying to comment on that. And also, fueled by the political times, feels like might be an overreaction to start going into that conversation for us. So all we know is that there were the reports of these things and we think it's disgusting and, and don't want to go back there. I don't know if you've been in Britain for the last couple of weeks at all, but I mean, it, it's a pretty bizarre time at the moment. How, how do you think the current situation post-Brexit affects your world, if at all? It's sort of um, awoken a lot of our friends and colleagues to talking about politics in a way that we haven't before. Um, we haven't really felt that it's been that relevant to us, but obviously this is a, a huge thing. And, um, you know, even though there's differing voices and opinions, even within the band, I think we're excited that there's, it feels like there's a growing gap in the conversation for, um, for more developed conversations about common good, social justice in a way that there hasn't been for a while. And so, like personally speaking, I'm, I'm excited for what's to come and the conversations that you know, our generation can have seriously now about what we stand for and who we are. Because you're an outward looking band, I mean, you travel the world and yeah. culture can play a big part in how Britain develops now, can't it? Yeah, and we've always felt like a British export. Most of the places in the world that we go, there's a warm reception to that. Um, we wouldn't want that to change, you know. Um, in America, you've already got a bit of equity just when you open your mouth with a British accent. <laughs> you know, I think our band has been lucky enough to do well in America, and I think probably 80% of it has just been our accents on stage. How did you two discover your mutual talents, if you like? At school, we were, we've been, we've been, we were at school together from the age of eight to 18, so we played in a lot of bands together, played a lot of jazz. He was a much better singer than me at school. He was in the good choir, I was in the rubbish one. And did you picture yourselves doing this? Absolutely not. Doing this kind of music as well? No. I mean, it came out of nowhere, really. I remember um, Marcus introducing me to a, a Ray LaMontagne record, and that was my access to essentially acoustic music. And before that, I was into Deftones and Metallica and never imagined when I was like even 17 that we'd be playing music with acoustic instruments. But if you're a Mumford & Sons fan, you have to be quite flexible now, don't you? Yeah, we try and challenge people a bit. I think people are now realising as, as a Mumford & Sons fan that we do move quite quickly through different styles of music, which we just really enjoy. And also our generation has the opportunity to do because to listen to different types of music, you no longer have to go to some niche record store in East London. We're one of those bands that's quite porous. You know, We enjoy being inspired by things around us and things that we listen to. And do you have a thought about what might be next? I mean, you know, you've done, you've done an Indian collaboration, you've done an African collaboration. What's next? I want to make an electronica album with some Middle Eastern artists, but I haven't told the lads yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I'm hearing that. Yeah. Uh, How does that sound to you? Open to anything. I think we feel very much like we're still just getting to the start line. That's the weird thing about this, this band, is that we haven't, we haven't even begun. And it's a nice feeling, is that we, we know we've got a lot more ahead of us, a lot more music to write, a lot more adventure to have. Um, hopefully nothing blocks us on the way. <laughs>